Okay, so we've been working with simple harmonic motion for quite some time now, and it's pretty cool, but it doesn't often properly describe a lot of physical systems. Like if we take a look at the mass and spring system, for example. The main problem is that we assumed the system was ideal, and that the only force acting on the system was that of Hooke's law. And if that were the case, then if we displaced this mass, it would oscillate back and forth forever. And we know that doesn't happen in real life. We know that there are dissipative forces. Forces that make the system lose energy. And eventually it'll oscillate back and forth less and less and less, and it'll eventually stop. And that's what we're going to no, talk about today. That's called dampened simple harmonic motion. And although there are many different ways to realize dampened simple harmonic motion, one common way you might see in class is with what we like to call a dash pot. And the idea is, let's just say that our block here is connected to a piston. And this piston is inside a nice little box that is actually full of a very viscous liquid. So as the piston moves back and forth, sorry, as the block moves back and forth, this piston pushes through this liquid and will lose energy from like the drag and the system will eventually lose energy, slow down and stop. Now, for a system like this, we can describe the damping force, which is going to be of the form negative BV. Here, V is the velocity of our system. B is what we like to call the damping coefficient. That'll just the value of which that'll just depend on like the actual physical properties of your system. And finally, we have a negative sign. And this negative sign is supposed to show that this force always acts in the opposite direction of motion. It always opposes motion. So if the piston is moving to the right, then there'll be a dampening force to the left. Likewise, if the piston is moving to the left, then the damping force will be opposing it, moving and will act towards the right. Now, two really quick things about this force. Um, one is that this is not like... Uh, this form is not... Uh, won't hold true for all cases of damping. But you can see some fairly interesting physics if you do use this form. And this is a fairly good approximation, I do believe, if, like, if velocity isn't too high. Uh, the other major point that I want to get to before we start is, let's just talk about the units of B very briefly. If force, if that is in newtons, and if velocity, if that's in meters per second, then B has to be in terms of Newton seconds per meter for everything to cancel out. And Newton seconds per meter, that's just another way of writing kilograms per second. Just want to get no, make that clear before we get started. But now let's assume that if we have this dampened system, that these two forces are the only forces that are going to act on our system. So let's plug these two forces into Newton's second law. And that's just the net force is equal to mass times acceleration. So in this case, we're going to get that negative kx minus bv is equal to ma. Now let's just add kx and bv to the opposite side. So we get that 0 is equal to ma plus bv plus kx. Now we can divide by m just to put it in a standard form. So 0 is equal to a plus b over m times v plus k over m times x. Now if the motion is only in one direction, let's just say the x direction, then we can rewrite acceleration and velocity as the derivatives of x. So we can say that 0 is equal to the second derivative of x with respect to time, plus b divided by m times the first derivative 
plus k divided by m times x. So what do we have here? This is a differential equation. And it is linear, it's second order, it's homogeneous, and since b, k, and m, they typically just have one value for our particular system, that means that these are our constant coefficients. And we can solve this type of differential equation. But before we do, let's just do one notational, like, shorthand, just to make life easier. What we're going to do is we're going to define gamma as b divided by m. And we're going to define omega naught squared as k divided by m. Typically, in, with simple harmonic motion, we just said that omega squared was k divided by m. But in this case, we're going to have to put this little naught sign down here. Essentially, this is what we like to call the natural frequency, or the frequency that the system would oscillate with if there were no damping. We'll talk a little bit about the difference between this and the actual frequency once we get into the nitty-gritty of things. But for now, let's just say that omega naught squared is k divided by m. In which case, we get that our differential equation for this system is the second derivative of x plus gamma times the first derivative plus omega naught squared times x, and all of that is equal to zero. So now, this is our differential equation. Let's try and solve this differential equation. We know that we can try and guess the formula. Whoops. x of t is equal to e to the rt. So let's plug this in here, try and find a value of r that'll help satisfy this differential equation. So if we do, we get the second derivative, r squared e to the rt, plus gamma times the first derivative, r e to the rt, plus omega naught squared times our e to the rt. That's equal to zero. We can factor out a exponential term and get r squared plus gamma r plus omega naught squared is equal to zero. And we recognize that this exponential can never be zero for all values of t. So we get our characteristic equation, r squared plus gamma r plus omega naught squared is equal to zero. So now we need to try and solve for r that will eventually, we'll find a value of r that will satisfy this differential equation. And this doesn't look immediately like factorizable, so let's try and use the quadratic formula. The quadratic formula says that r is going to be equal to negative gamma plus or minus the square root of gamma squared minus 4 times omega naught squared all divided by 2. Now here is the kicker. Gamma and omega naught, those are dependent on, well, they're based off our b value, m value, and k value, which are dependent on, like, the actual physical setup of our system. Which means we can't make any, like, blanket generalization that'll work for all, like, different uh, values of b, k, and m. Essentially, what I'm trying to say is, there may be some cases where the damping is quite large, so gamma is much bigger than omega naught squared. Or there may be other cases where the damping is kind of small and o gamma squared is much less than omega naught squared. And you may think, well, what does that matter? Well, the, real, the deal is, like, if gamma is less than omega naught squared, or for omega naught squared, then this value under the radical will be negative, which means we'll have to factor out an imaginary unit. And that means r is going to have some imaginary component, and since r is our exponent, we're going to have a it's going to entail some entirely different properties for our solution. Likewise, if gamma squared is greater than 4 omega naught squared, then this is going to be positive under the radical, and this is going to be real, so r is going to be real, 
So our solution are, is going to be real as well. So depending on the physical values of like our gamma and our omega naught, we can get entirely different answers or different types of answers. So what are we going to do? What we'll find and what we're going to do in the next couple of videos is we're just going to have to deal with each case individually. Take a look at what happens when gamma is less than 4 omega naught squared. Take a look at what happens when gamma is greater than 4 omega naught squared. And take a look at what happens when gamma squared is actually equal to 4 omega naught squared. And we'll find that in each case they're going to entail like, well, we're going to find that there is slightly different and slightly interesting physics involved. So with that, let's start talking about dampened harm simple harmonic motion in the next video.